I just looked at the calendar and to be honest, I was surprised how close the launch of AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPU actually is. We are talking about less than 6 weeks from now. Zen 4 is closing in fast. So for this video, I have collected all the latest information regarding Zen 4, from the actual release date to which products will be launched first, what mainboards will be available, questions about DDR5 memory, power consumption and cooler compatibility. Oh, and of course, estimated performance. This won't be an in-depth video on Zen 4. You will have to wait for that until after the launch, when we get all the architecture and performance data. It is more of a Zen 4 crash course to bring everyone up to speed. Without further ado, let's dive right in. First, the release schedule. Zen 4-based Ryzen 7000 CPUs will launch on September 15th. This date has been confirmed multiple times now, even by OEM partners like MSI, so I have no doubt about it. And September 15th is a hard release. That's when you will be able to buy the CPU at your local store or order them online. A few days before launch, the rumors are currently pointing towards September 13th, the review embargo will be lifted. That's when your favorite tech YouTubers will be allowed to publish their Zen 4 reviews and your subscriber feed will be flooded with videos. This date isn't official yet, but it does make a lot of sense, being two days before launch. And it's a good sign that reviews will be out before launch, it means AMD is confident in its product. Another interesting date in the release schedule is the 30th of August. That's when AMD is supposed to officially announce everything about Zen 4, which will most likely include another confirmation of the release date, and we will get infos on what products AMD will actually launch, including the names, specs and pricing of the different CPUs. And then there is, or rather was, the official AIM5 mainboard showcase, which already happened this past Thursday, where OEMs like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte and so on showed their upcoming X670 and X670 Extreme mainboards. I watched the webcast live and was able to ask some questions with some interesting answers. But more on that later. So to recap, Ryzen 7000 reveal by AMD on the 30th of August. This date is unconfirmed but highly likely. Then on September 13th, the Revo embargo is supposed to be lifted. And finally on September 15th, Zen 4 will go live. Next are the individual products AMD will launch. Again, these infos are not official yet, but there have been so many corresponding leaks, including on the AMD website itself, that we have very high confidence. AMD will launch four different SKUs, starting with a 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 7600X, a 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 7700X, or maybe 7800X, but current rumors are in favor of the 7700X name, a 12-core 24-thread Ryzen 9 7900X, and of course the flagship, the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 9 7950X. As you can see, the basic product stack hasn't really changed from Zen 3 or even Zen 2. AMD is still offering the same 6, 8, 12 and 16 core CPUs. And to be honest, I don't think AMD is under any pressure to increase their core count just yet. Zen 4 with 3D recache, aka Zen 4D, won't be available at launch and we don't have an exact timeline for its release yet. My initial estimate was somewhere around early summer of next year, but current rumors indicate Zen 4D might come a lot sooner, maybe only 3-4 to four months later. Let's see how this turns out, but as AMD has already confirmed that Zen 4D will use 3D recache at some point is literally only a matter of time. Prices haven't been officially announced yet and this is also something that can change very quickly, even right before launch. I think the 7600X will launch somewhere around $250 to $300. The 8-core should be between $350 to $450 and I honestly think it will depend on which name AMD is picking. If they release a 7800X, up to $450 could be possible. A 7700X should come in cheaper. It all depends on how AMD is assessing the competition from Intel's Raptor Lake CPUs. The 7900X will most likely be in the $500 to $600 range, and the 7950X could be anywhere from $700 to $1000 depending on how much it dominates. Let's see if my estimates turn out to be right. I'm also interested in your opinion on the Zen 4 MSRP. What price ranges do you expect? Aside from guessing the price tags based on AMD's past CPUs, clock speed and power draw are even more interesting in my opinion. AMD has not yet unveiled any concrete numbers, all of this is still rumor based, but multiple sources are saying basically the same things and if we combine them with the information AMD has given us so far, we get a picture that should be pretty close to reality. AMD already showed a Zen 4 CPU running at above 5.5 GHz all-core and announced a large increase in clock speed. So it's to no surprise that the upcoming Ryzen 7000 CPUs will clock really, really high. 
Current Zen 3 based CPUs have a base clock between 3.4 to 3.7 GHz and a boost clock of 4.6 to 4.9 GHz. If the current rumors are correct, Zen 4 will basically take the boost clock of Zen 3 and use them as base clocks. The 7600X and the 7900X are supposed to have a 4.7 GHz base clock, while the 7700X and the 7950X should come in a little lower at 4.5 GHz. I'm interested to see if these numbers are also valid for AVX 512 workloads. The different base clocks do make sense when we look at the reported TTP values, with the single chiplet 6 and 8 core CPUs coming in at 105 watt TTP and the dual chiplet 12 and 16 core CPUs at the new 170 watt TTP tier. Because the 6 and 8 core models are in the same TTP class, the 6 core has a slightly higher base clock since it has less CPU cores and as a result more thermal capacity for higher clock speeds. It's the same if we compare the 7900X to the 7950X. The 12 core CPU can sustain a higher base clock at the same TDP value because it has four less cores to run. So far we have only looked at the base clocks. The boost clocks are even more impressive. And since the boost clocks are usually not based on heavy all core loads and also related to CPU binning, the higher tier CPUs also have a higher boost clock, independent of TDP values. The 7600X starts at 5.3 GHz. The 7700X gets to 5.4 GHz. The 7900X makes the jumps to 5.6 GHz. And the 7950X is supposed to hit a crazy 5.7 GHz during boost. Yes, AMD is raising the TDP values in order to fuel these high clock speeds. But since Intel doesn't really compete in efficiency, it's a calculated move from AMD. And we have to wait for reviews to confirm if these TDP values are actually being hit during normal load for example during gaming, or if they are based on AVX 512, which is known for increasing power consumption and heat output. Higher TDP values also affect multi-core performance much more than single core, because during single thread workloads, the TDP is never really a limiting factor. Zen 4 isn't launching alone. New 600 series mainboards based on the new AIM-5 socket are also being released. Zen 4 will require a new socket, no ray around it. AIM-4 had a long run, but the 5800X3D was most likely the last release. Not only has AIM-5 more pins, AMD is also switching from PGA to LGA, which means that with AIM-5 the pins are inside the mainboard socket, as opposed on the back of the CPU. Basically the same technology Intel is using for their consumer products. Zen 4 supports all the latest tech like DDR5, PCI Express 5.0, USB 4 and so on. Oh, and every Ryzen 7000 CPU will also include a small iGPU, so you don't need a discrete GPU to boot your system. There is no DDR4 support, so if you are thinking about buying a Ryzen 7000, thousand based system, not only do you need a new mainboard, you will also need new DDR5 memory. AMD will stick to their usual chipset offerings, with a X670 for the high end and a B650 as mainstream option. But this time there are also special extreme versions available. For example, X670E mainboards, which is simply a fancy way to tell you that the mainboard supports PCI Express Gen 5 everywhere, from M.2 slots to the PHE slots for graphics cards, while the non-extreme mainboards will only support Gen 5 for M.2 slots. X670 and X670E based mainboards will launch first, so if you want to get Zen 4 right at release, you will have no other choice but to buy an expensive X670 based mainboard. B650 boards are expected to launch later this year. And yes, this is just in order to milk early adopters. At the mainboard showcase last week, we got a first look and detailed information about the upcoming flagships, and I have to say, we will get some really beefy boards. One thing that I noticed immediately was how big the VRM setups are, with up to 24 105M power stages on some of the high-end boards. Literally every OEM that includes ASUS, ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte and BioStar has super high-end power stages with large cooling solutions in order to support the 170W TDP. A 7950X at above 5GHz all-core, maybe even during a AVX 512 workload, will draw a lot of power. ASUS showed their well-known ROG Crosshair, Extreme and Hero models. Gigabyte's high-end Aorus Extreme and Master mainboards also look amazing, just like the MSI's X670E Godlike. ASRock will release a special edition of their Taichi model, the Taichi Carrera, and even Biostar, who isn't that well-known in the US and the EU, showed a really impressive Valkyrie branded model with 22 105 amp Dr. Moss VRMs. But as you can imagine, these sports will come with a hefty price tag, especially at launch. If you watch my video about how the 600 series mainboards are built, you know that while the X670E models have to support PCI Express 5.0 everywhere, the normal X670 can also supply the same connectivity if the OEMs want to offer that. 
So far I have only seen PCIe Gen 5 for the GPU on X670E and during the webcast I was able to ask if there are any plans for standard X670 mainboards with Gen 5 GPU support. The answer from MSI, and I guess it's the same with all other OEMs, was a bit disappointing as there are currently no plans to release a X670 non-E mainboard with PCIe 5.0 for graphics cards. But they did state that it depends on, and I quote, what the market wants. So I guess if a competitor would release such a board and it starts to sell well, other OEMs might follow. But in a sea of expensive new hardware to buy, one thing might be helpful. AIM5 supports the same socket AIM4 cooling solutions, which means no need to buy a new CPU cooler and manufacturers don't need to add another retention module. Good move by AMD, in my opinion. We have talked about almost everything that's new with Zen 4. The only thing that is missing are performance numbers. And I don't want to start any speculation at this point or go through the large amount of possible leaks and rumors. AMD officially claims around 8% more IPC and then there is the obvious clock speed increase. If we combine these two factors, single thread performance should improve by at least 20% over Zen 3 and multi-thread has an even larger possible gain because of the increased TTP range. But since we are getting really close I'm sure we can all wait the 5 to 6 weeks until reviews are dropping. Let me know if I missed anything important about the Zen 4 launch. I tried to make a concise video with all the important infos around the Ryzen 7000, which I'm actually quite excited for. This fall is going to be filled with new hardware and Zen 4 is just the beginning. Intel will try to counter AMD with its upcoming Raptor Lake CPUs, AMD and Nvidia will start the next gen GPU battle with Arduino A3 and Ada Lovelace, and we will find out how Apple designed their upcoming A16 SoC and which process node they are using. I would like to know if you are planning a upgrade to Zen 4 right away. Maybe you are waiting for Zen 4D or are you planning on skipping this generation altogether? Which Ryzen 7000 GPUs would be your first choice and is DDR5 pricing a big factor for you? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you found this video interesting and see you in the next one.